All right, what are you telling me? My name is Marius and I'm a third year graduate medical student at Southampton. The purpose of this video is to help you prepare for your medical school interviews if they're coming up. I'm hopefully going to give you 10 very quick tips, um, things that I did and things that my colleagues did in preparation for our medical school interviews. So tip number one is to clock specifics for each uni. So when you know which universities you have got interviews in, you want to go onto the university website, look at specifics for that course. You know, how do they set up their course? Is it a problem-based learning type approach? Do they teach it in a case-based learning type, type way? Or do they just teach it all to you didactically? You've got to attend hella lectures and they just give you all the information, shove it down your throats like that. And the reason you need to be confident on this is because in the interview, they're likely to ask you, why do you want to go to this particular medical school? And you can spin a little yarn about how you like the way they set up the course because that is the way you learn. Basically, yeah, even if it's not the way you learn, you need to convince them that that is the way you've always learned. You love that kind of learning style because unfortunately it's slim pickings out here. We've got a hustle. We only get four applications for graduate medicine and undergraduate medicine. We need to adapt our approach to different medical schools uh, so that we can secure a place and fulfill our dream of becoming the doctor we always wanted to be. The other thing to clock for each specific uni is potentially a little bit of research that that medical school has been undertaking or people are researching within that medical school. For example, I did this for all my interviews for Kings, Warwick, Newcastle and Southampton and I was ready when they asked me why do you want to come to this particular uni, I would say, you know, they're doing some really interesting research, you know, I read on the website that they're doing this, this and this um, and that's something that I'd I would love to be a part of and love to get involved in. You know, you might get lucky and be interviewed by the person who you've read their paper and then you can be like, yo, boss, I've read your paper. It's sick, I loved it, I loved every bit of it, especially the bit where you did that, did that graph. Um, I thought that was lovely, lovely stuff. And yeah, when I knew what interviews I was getting, what medical schools um, had invited me to interview, then I would do these two things. I'd look at how they set up their course uh, and I'd look at a little bits of research and I'd opened a tab on my OneNote and made a few notes on, on that particular university. And then before the interview, like the day before or the week before, yeah, I'd just review those notes, um, make sure I, I'd brushed up on my spiel about why I wanted to go to that medical school. Because you don't want to go in and be like, yeah, I love this uni. It's, uh, obviously you do uh, didactic learning, which you know really suits me and yeah. It's a, it's a PBL medical school. So number two is to read BBC Health in the run up to your medical school interviews. And yeah, BBC Health obviously runs stories about contemporary health related topics. And some medical schools like to ask, have you read anything interesting about health in the news? Or, you know, have you heard about this specific case that's been in the news lately? They wanna see that you're interested enough in becoming a doctor that you're slightly up to date with some of the issues that um, are going on or somewhat aware of some of the popular cases that are being reported on from around the UK. Also they might run some stories about some interesting bits of health tech um, and certain medical schools like to ask about health tech as well. Tip number three is to watch Ali Abdal's ethics videos. Yeah, this is something I did in the run-up to my medical school interviews. Um, him and his group of you know undergrad medical students uh, run through some popular cases using the structure that they expect us to use basically. This structure kind of falls back on those four pillars of ethics, so justice, non-maleficence, beneficence uh, and autonomy. These guys basically just go through a few of the popular cases, the Bauer Garber case or the Charlie Gard case. So these are kind of a useful and pretty chilled way of seeing how medical students or doctors are supposed to interpret these cases. So if you get asked one of these ethical questions uh, in an interview, then you have some sort of structure to base your answer around. The next thing that might be worth doing is brushing up on your ethics by going through a few of the questions on the situational judgment test question bank on Quizlet. It's been probably a few months since you did the UCAT. Um, you probably smashed the UCAT because you watched a few of those Marius Hugh videos. But if you're anything like me, you got really good at how to answer those situational judgment test questions um, using the structure that they want you to use. And actually it's really useful to have that in mind when you go into these interviews and they give you an ethics scenario to interpret. Yeah, I think it'd be useful to go through, to go back to your Quizlet, onto the situational judgment test tab and just do a few questions, you know, check that you're still interpreting these scenarios in the right way or in the way that they want you to interpret them. The next thing I did was I read a very short introduction 
to medical ethics. Again, this is quite a good introduction to how to approach uh, scenarios where there isn't really a clear-cut answer and they want you to be able to fall back on an ethical framework that will allow you to you know come to a decision based on what to do in the case and also be able to justify it ethically so yeah there is a bit of noise in this book like some of it is a little bit irrelevant but again it's a good introduction to the four pillars of ethics and it does go through some um, example cases with you so you can work through them spend a bit of time thinking about why a decision for a certain scenario is correct based on you know the framework of the NHS values and things like that the next thing to do is to look around on YouTube or on Google for people sharing their experience of their interview days you know I've done a few of these for the for the four medical schools that I interviewed at and I think it's just quite useful to hear someone's perspective on you know their experience of the day um, what kind of things it might have been useful to prepare for and that's going to give you a little bit of familiarity for the process so you're not going in blind and yeah I tend to think that familiarity with the process probably eases my nerves if I know what I'm going into I can prepare myself in the best possible way and tailor my preparation to that experience that I'm about to go into the next thing that I'd suggest that you do is to call in some favors from people and to use nepotism so the first way to use nepotism <laughs> Yeah, it sounds weird saying this. The first way to use nepotism um, in your medical school interview preparation is in regards to work experience. So if you know a friend of a friend whose dad or mum is a doctor, it would be worth getting some experience with them. So I got some experience with a friend of a friend's dad who was a consultant urologist, so a urological surgeon. And, you know, I did those two days and it was absolutely sick. I loved it. They were doing some mad stuff with a robot. Um, you know, my guy was sitting in the corner of the room while this guy is hooked up to a robot um, and they were taking out his prostate, I think. But yeah, it was an incredible experience. Yeah, it really inspired me kind of to carry on down this medical path because, you know, I thought that was so sick. Uh, this experience I talked about during my medical school interviews um, and I think probably you know how enthused I was about how cool it was probably carried across and they knew that I was you know serious about this life I was too gassed to you know go and do anything else so better give them a place. The next way to potentially use nepotism is to get tips from people that have been to that medical school and done that exact course. People can give you a more realistic take on how the course is set up, you know, whether they even like the course or not, how it's taught, whether the anatomy is good, but also they can give you their experience of the interview process um, and what potentially to prepare for in your own interview. Yeah, obviously these tips will only be of limited use because Clearly they change the questions year to year. So in my experience, medical students are just over the top helpful, right? They just give you too much. They do way too much to try and help you get onto medicine. So yeah, I already had a few friends doing medicine who could give me some tips on how to approach uh, preparing for my application and things like that. But eight is to do game day style preparation with a friend. So I'm very lucky in that one of my best friends is a doctor. He's training to be an anaesthetist currently. And actually when I found out that I had four graduate medical school interviews got this guy around and we did some game day style preparation and by this I mean we tried to simulate the environment that I was going into in my interviews um, as much as we could I suited up I put my smart ass shoes on polished those shoes you know what I'm saying done the hair um, you know trying to look fresh as I would try to in the interviews it was useful like it was really good to just have like a like a dress rehearsal type thing um, with no real world consequences I could practice giving my answers to some questions that you know he asked me about ethical scenarios and you know why do you want to come to this particular medical school or whatever um, practice saying those things out loud in front of someone else because you know it sort of simulates the nerves not quite but you get a few of the butterflies that you would get on the interview day itself tip number nine is to read the health section of the economist in the run-up to your interviews so yeah I got a little free or four month subscription to the economist I think they give you weekly or is it monthly I can't remember but they give you a magazine they send you a physical magazine once in a certain time period and there's a health section it's only like yeah 10 pages long but the health section had quite a lot of interesting stuff on like health tech I personally read about an app that someone had developed that would monitor basically people's vitals and track whether they were deteriorating and then it would send an alert to you know the doctor who had the app on his phone and yeah the aim of that was just to catch people that were deteriorating 
potentially before you would normally catch them if you were just you know manually going and checking the the news chart the national early warning score chart so i thought this was interesting so i made a note of it in my like medical school preparation one note tab or something and actually when i got into my southampton interview lo and behold they asked me something about health tech and i was able to reel off this app that i'd read about in the economist a few weeks earlier boom like you know i was sitting there slick i couldn't believe they'd asked me that question i was like you know what i got that I got that for you, yeah? I got, I, got, I got an app for you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so the last thing is to practice questions with someone from that medical school interview book. So yeah, I bought this book in the run up to my interviews and actually it was quite useful, slyly it was quite useful, compared to the UCAT book made by the same company, which was just dead. It's got quite a few different scenarios and again, um, you can practice trying to answer these scenarios yourself. And then below that, they've written out what they would expect you to say for this particular scenario based on you know the NHS values uh, and ethical bobbins and bits like that. So yeah, those are the 10 tips for medical school interviews and I'll see you in the next one, cheers.